Hi, my name is Simon and welcome to my little garage. In this episode, I want to show you how to easily detect and verify whether you have a good or perhaps a bad ground connection in your car. Because an old car like this, you could actually suffer from uh, multiple electrical issues due to a bad grounding. And typical, what you have when you have the engine bay here, you have multiple ground connections in your car. In this case, we have one on the transmission box. We have a grounding at the chassis at the right corner. We have at the left corner. We even have one here at the front. And we have one underneath the battery tray. Uh, the one over here, as an example, actually is the grounding for the engine control unit. So it goes without saying, if you have a high resistance circuit, uh, which basically a bad grounding is, well, the engine control unit will not work as it uh, has to be, as it needs to. And, uh, well, first of all, we can measure the grounding with two devices. And I definitely prefer this one, and I'm going to show you why in a little second. But we can imagine that we want to use a regular multimeter uh, to measure the resistance. And we'll measure at just the 2 ohm, of course. And what I'm going to do here is... I think uh, I want to show you the grounding point at the right side of the chassis. It's right here. It's that one. So even though it looks a little corroded and rusty, well, I don't really know if it's good or bad. So I'm going to measure the resistance from that point to my negative terminal on the battery, because this is where the grounding should be. I'm going to use my regular multimeter and, uh, well, let's see if I can make a good connection. So I'm just going to touch the measuring probe directly on the bolt head and I'm going to measure over here. So we actually have a very good ground connection because there is zero resistance, it says. Okay, so I'm going to use another device which is called an LR meter. And the difference with the LR meter versus a regular multimeter is that, first of all, it has an even more precise measurement of the resistance. And it also measures the resistance with a higher voltage, thereby uh, it transfers a, a higher current also. And uh, I'll show you another thing it also does. Because the way it works is that you connect it, it needs power supply from the battery. And before you even use it, you even need to calibrate it. And that basically means, well, you just press zero and you shortcut the two wires. It even takes the resistance of the measuring wires into account in your measurement. So I'm going to do the same measurement again. And I'm going to connect it to the negative terminal. And the other one will be... So, and what you see now is it's actually not 0, 0.0 ohm. And what you're reading now is milliohms. And that is simply to the fact that the precision of the LR meter is much higher. Now, remember that you need a thousand milliohm to get one ohm. And the multimeter, and even though it's a rather good one I have, measures uh, 0.1. So that's 100 milliohm interval. And this does in, in thousands instead. So measuring the Resistance with a multimeter is not necessarily the best way of doing it. And also the fact that this passes on a higher current. So that's a small introduction. And actually, while I'm at it, it has two features. The second feature is it can measure inductance. And inductance is a way of verifying whether an injector or a solenoid valve is actually in good condition or not. That's it, guys and girls. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and take care.